Alright, right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six people? Oh boy. Oh yeah, boys, how's it going? Oh, yes! We got rid of the fire mage! <laughs> no, I'm not gonna betray. One, two, three, four, five now. And let's start this fight with Ed, yeah? Come at me, great. Let's get into the middle. We do this. Ready? Oh god, I had to run all the way around like that? Jesus. Sorry. Yes. Most beautiful. I will have your head. Ow. One more, and I can get three of them dead. Nice. All right, beautiful. Yes. Most beautiful. Okay, let's gang up on this guy. Ow, you son of a gun. Oh, she, he just fully healed her. That's not good. Weapon is like nipples on me. Useless. He's so low. Oh, he's so low. Can you burn her? She's getting, she's getting her eyes. There you go. Good kill. Now let's hit this guy. Or girl. Try a different tactic. This isn't working. Need my skill. Here, no poison. Sorry, I can't. Oh, I miss. I got it. Is Narat gonna come in here? Nice kill. Woo! You survived, baby. Wait, what just happened? Wait! <laughs> oh, we got teleported.
Whoa. Uh-oh. Someone's bad. Oh, crap. <laughs>
เอ่ยScarlet Chorus hate me. Oh god, this is favorite hate me. Oh no. Oh wow. I have a ton of favor with the Avenger and Guard. Yo. Cool. Wait, what? I can hire people? What is this? The ancient device perched atop the mountain spire in Vengeance Well is a product of Forgotten Ages. It is unclear what function it had, it once had, or if it can be used again. Resting in any spire grants a bonus to all skills. Whoa! This is platinum rings? Iron rings. Okay. Iron ingot. Scroll. Okay, okay, okay. Hang on. Tyga, the Swindler, Conquest. A skill trainer who teaches one handed weapons, parry, and athletics. Ooh. One handed, two handed, dodge, and. Oh, wow! Ah, this guy's good! What is he? Swordbreaker, right? Okay. Why does he only cost five? Why does it only have cost five gold? That's very suspicious. A thoughtful scavenger with many unique items for sale. A skilled trainer who teaches one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, dual wield, parry, and dodge. All these guys, they teach so much stuff, yet for some reason they're so cheap. A smith who regularly produces weapons. Edict. Oh god. It's like the region of the view information about oh, Edict. No Edict. Edict of Storms. Oh crap. In the year 430 TR, the Overlook Requirement Edict over the realm of Stalwart. Those who in pride and arrogance stand against the peace and order of our empire shall be ground beneath the stones of their land. Let those who call themselves unbroken, who embrace the chaos of war in defiance of our order, be broken with the storms of our rage. Let our storm rage until the last play be broken or the line of regent falls. Edict of fire. Edict of stone. So, wait. If I go back to these areas, can I clear out the edicts? Can I have Chiron help us? He's dead though, isn't he? I thought we killed him. I don't know. We'll figure something out. That's a fancy looking armor. Yo. Do I have a good helmet, please? I, I am so sick and tired of not having a good helmet. <laughs> like seriously. I think I'm having I think I have medium armor right now. Like this power. This is power, man. Do I have new abilities? Any of us level up? None of us leveled up from that. Really? We were very close to it, at least. Okay, let's see. Lantry's up here. 
Hey, man, how's it going? At least in theory, I'm supposed to be observing history and not getting myself wrapped into it. All the same, this is the thrill of a lifetime. Rarely does one stand so close to monumental moments in the making. You're playing a very dangerous game, or maybe toying with your food. By adopting the Vendrian Guard, you've bloodied the waters with the chum of hope. I must ask, did you help the Oathbreakers to suit your own plans and whims, or do you genuinely wish to protect them? And what of their past actions against Kairos? Aren't you worried of guilt by association? We saw what became of Cairn for merely suggesting treachery. We long held to the fantasy that someone would rally to our cause, but we assumed it would be our neighbors and cousins that rescued us from extinction. I'd never have guessed salvation would come from the enemy's court. Whatever you do next, consider that many eyes will be upon you, for you have both delivered and taken away the Overlord's edicts, and few will know how to make sense of the latter. You are an exception the Archons cannot afford to ignore, they will likely aim to control or destroy you. Most of Kairos' edicts were either worded to end in a manner of the Overlord's choosing, or the edicts have simply continued in perpetuity. That's not to say there haven't been stories of broken edicts. They're just uncommon. The oldest is, I think, Goldbraith and the Edict of Sorrows, and that tale dates back to around the year 110. Aside from you, the most recent was the Edict of Twisting Grasses, back in 380. In all these stories, Kairos' Edict very clearly gives its victim a single way to escape, and someone manages it. What's never happened is the pure abatement of an Edict, like using a spell of warding or cancellation. You betrayed Graven Ash, the Legion, and our northern countrymen. As far as I'm concerned, you are a traitor to this campaign. And you chose the savage Tearsmen over those who came to guide them with a civilizing hand? You disgust me, Fatebinder. Let us be clear on one point. You have my blade, but my heart belongs to Ash and the North. I am a weapon bound to you only by duty. Nothing more. Hates me. Yep, He's, he hates me. So, the Scarlet Chorus and Disfavored are at each other's throats. <laughs> Can't say I didn't see that coming, but the Archons might have waited until one war was over before they started another. Fighting with the rebels? I'm sure Tunon didn't see that one coming when he dispatched you to help break the siege. Who can say? War is all about compromising your morals, deciding who lives and dies. What seems like a mistake turns into your greatest call down the road. I'll say this much, our time together is anything but dull. My blades are yours for as long as you'll have me. Yay! What do you need?
The thought has crossed my mind from time to time. During the many battles of the Conquest, we found ourselves standing back to back with enemies on all sides on more than one occasion. The big guy here is as useless as an empty scabbard without his phalanx to keep him alive, but I move fast enough to compensate for it. And it's nice having a living wall of rusted iron I can use for cover. This is probably going to get them to Kate me. Absolutely not. Oh, come on. Our fighting styles are incompatible, and any disfavored lieutenant will tell you not to join at the hip soldiers who can't stomach each other. I'm inclined to agree. If you want to pair up fighters, there has to be some great passion or magnetism between them. We don't have it. A valiant attempt, but I'm not as easily swayed by your courtly tongue. Neither am I. At least, not in this context. Dang it! Next time. Next time. Let me get it. Uh... I think that because I don't want to covers it pretty well. Training alongside this self-important braggart is likely to sap whatever patience I have left. I can see that you're out to serve the best interests of the war, but we are accustomed to handling ourselves as individuals rather than as a pair. Okay, next time, next time. Salutations, Fatebinder. Or should I now call you Lord of Vendrian's Well? The Spire King? Prince of the Suggestive Vertical Slab. So if I might ask, what is your plan now? The edict no longer looms overhead, and Kairos's conquest of the tears seems to be slipping, what with the armies in civil war. Yeah, I should probably talk to Tunon before he killed me. I would counsel you to do just that. I'm sure the events of Vendrian's Well are best explained from your mouth to Tunon's ears. Furthermore, I'd guess the Archon of Justice would want to know your take on the Archons and their divide. My first suggestion would be to build a boat. Something durable, and take our chances on the high seas far from Kairos. Oh Jesus, she wants us to run. I have a second and more practical suggestion. Look to the horizon, and slightly up. By that I mean the other spires. Oh. We should see what's atop the others. Otherwise someone else might look first. Queens and kings of past ages have claimed the spires in the sense of, Hey look, I put up a scaffold and hung a banner a tenth of the height of a spire. But that's nowhere near the same thing as what we all just saw. So I say, let's see if the other spires react to you the same way this one does. If we don't, I'll take that as your way of saying you suffer from debilitating acrophobia. Kairos' armies made short work of the tears. There's still plenty of anti-Kairos sentiment, but not a lot of folks with any fight left in them. But we have a few options. The classic option for a land war in the tears is hiring Free City's mercenaries. Most of them were slain in the war, but the Bronze Brotherhood is still alive and... strutting. They're stationed in Lethian's Crossing. The idea I was pitching to the Vendrian Guard. Let's arm every Beastman tribe that'll join us. The Stone Sea is home to a bevy of tribes that were freed during the war, and neither the Chorus nor the Disfavored can seem to tame them. Ooh, that's a good idea. If we really want to hate ourselves in the morning... Stalwart is pretty famous for not helping their neighbors, but also famous for being relentless at war. The disfavored have their leadership surrounded, but the people in the storm-blasted countryside are still fighting. And while I don't endorse this, I must list all the options. The School of Ink and Quill. I'm sure there's some logic to working with them, just like there's some logic in cutting off your own head to prevent all future headaches. The Bronze Brotherhood of Lethian's Crossing aren't necessarily good company, but at least it'll be quick and easy to find out where we stand with them. We can afford them or not, they'll take a contract or not. Well, the court has a guild of mages, the Forgebound, right? They are your peers, seeing as you're all legally sworn to Tunon. Maybe you can get them to be more loyal to you than to Tunon? Well, that's gonna be hard. 
We could also try to drive a wedge between the Earthshakers and the Disfavored. The Disfavored are tied as family, but the Earthshakers are... married in family? They were followers of Karen and got adopted in. Well, that's true. But then I enact the... the edict onto them. You are right to call the Disfavored a family. We are far more than mere countrymen. And the strength of our legion is in the love we bear towards each other. Jesus. Ever since the betrayal of Cairn, we have been less trusting of our arcane allies. The Earthshakers are a fickle academic bunch. Their principles align with their ambition, not the hopes of the North. Nor should you. They may be deceitful and challenging to manage, but they have served the Iron Legion well in the past. So if these Archon-less mages could be persuaded to rally to us, we'd tip things in our favor. <laughs> Easier said than done, of course. Right. Okay. Well, short of Tunon giving you orders on pain of death, you have the luxury of acting on your own volition. Though the disfavored are likely to come for you. Whatever you decide, I'm at your disposal. And I am thankful to not be a bloody pile of awful in Vendrian's well. Life under your banner will, I'm sure, prove most interesting. Right. Alright. Good lord, what a fight. Alright. Well, let's talk to her. Right, so my objective. What the hell am I doing? Oh. Wait, Tunon is not on here anymore. Was he on here? Uh oh. Yikes. Uh, right. My objective. What is it? Whatever you did, Ascension Hall, Vendrian's Well, it teleported that brought you to the top of the uh, mountain spire. A Vendrian Mill has shut off and left you stranded on top of the. Pass the strange device at its center. Might have the key activating it once. 